our staff and our music ministry for bringing that to life. And our music ministry is going to bless us this morning with a beautiful service of caroling. So we want you to just enjoy. Um, and this service is a little more casual than Christmas Eve. Uh, we, I think we even have some children in PJs. Malachi wore his and he was trying to check out this morning. Is it really okay to wear PJs to church? Today it is. And adults, I see none of you wore PJs. Probably a good call. But um, <laughs> um, thank you for joining us for worship. We want to extend a special welcome to Steve and Vicki Henry, who are members at First Christian Church. And we have been praying for you guys. And uh, Steve is a leader there and leads in the ministry. And we're so thankful for his service and praying for them. Uh, it's always hard to have anything happen at your church, especially a fire, but especially in the Christmas season when everyone wants to come together. And so we'll be praying for you guys and for your ministry. You are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're thankful for you and honored to have you today. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us this morning for worship, and welcome to those online. Hello and good morning. Please let us know that you are worshiping with us by signing in, so saying hello, liking or loving uh, the worship post, and just let us know that you're with us. I bet some of y'all are at home with your hot chocolate, and we're glad that you joined us. We just have a couple announcements this morning. Um, first, this coming month, January, does anyone ever make New Year's resolutions? Does anyone ever flop? <laughs> like by January 2nd. <laughs> Well, one of the things that I think many of us often want to do is we say, it's a new year, I want to spend more time with God. I want to be more faithful in reading my Bible. Uh, I want to uh, pray more. And so something we love to do in January here at First Methodist is to focus on uh, reading through a book of the Bible or to focus on prayer. And this year we will be focusing on reading through the Gospel of John together. And so we invite you on January 1st to begin with John chapter 1. And then just read a chapter a day. If you get behind, it's okay. God still loves you. Just jump back in. And then Nick and I will be preaching on something from your reading the past week. And you'll come here and already be familiar with what we're going to preach on. So please join us in reading through the Gospel of John together. And I would invite you to include your teenagers and your children. And if you need any um, suggestions of family-friendly versions or kid-friendly versions, we would be happy to help with that. But include the whole family and have time. Time to read one chapter of the Gospel of John each day. And Nick has a special announcement as well. Well, some, some of you probably know that uh, next Saturday is what? New Year's, right? Well, I'm going to be doing something for New Year's, uh, and I was just going to see if you, if you want to join me. From my house, and this would be from your house too, at 9.30 on Mountain Time, I'm going to be praying from 9.30 to 10. P.M. Thank you. 9.30 to 10. Now you say, well, Nick, why 9.30? Well, for one thing, we have people watching that are, that are in uh, Eastern time zone. It's also when the ball drops is at 10 o'clock Eastern time, or at 10 o'clock our time is when the ball drops. So praying in the new year for our country, for our community, is something I was hoping to do. And it's real, real simple. 9.30, if you're, if you're in our time zone, just start praying. Pray for our church, pray for the churches of Hobbes, pray for our state, pray for our nation. Uh, and then pray from 9.30 to 10 or go as long as you like. For those especially if you can't stay up longer than that, pray at any time you want to. But, uh, <laughs> but I'll be praying at 9.30. And so if you'd like to join me from home, and, if you're, and again, wherever you're listening... Well, I, we would love to have you. If you are watching from another time zone, just adjust for your time of day, uh, and we'll all be praying. Um, but I hope you will join me in that, and it'll be a blessing. Amen. Well, I want to invite you to join me in prayer. Loving and gracious God, I thank you that you are with us. I thank you for those joining us for worship, uh, for those joining us in the sanctuary and those online. We thank you for the beautiful Christmas Eve gathering that we had and for each and every church in our community. Um, and Lord, we pray for all those this morning, wherever they are, that, that you will be present with them in such a way that they have a sense 
that our world is different because Jesus came. And Lord, that is our prayer, that we will live in such a way and worship in such a way and serve in such a way that it makes a difference that Jesus came into this world as one of us. And we thank you for that. We lift up those who are in need. We lift up those who are alone. We lift up those who are struggling. We lift up First Christian Church as they move on and adapt and, and try to put everything back together. We lift up our family and our friends near and far. And Lord, this morning, we bring to you whatever is heavy on our hearts. I know it's the day after Christmas and we have so many reasons to rejoice, but Lord, many of us have heavy hearts about many things. And so we lift those up to you for those who are grieving, for those who are struggling, for those who are ill, whatever the need, Lord, whatever the family concern, God, we lift them up to you. And we ask that you will be present and show us that it makes a difference that Jesus came into this world and gave everything. And so we pray for your healing and for your hope, for your restoration and for your salvation to come. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And now we will be blessed as the music ministry leads us in worship and caroling. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Wow, that thing's loud, isn't it? Can you imagine a world without Christmas? What about Christmas without carols? Sometimes the Jow gals think we wouldn't be good without Carol either. Ooh, that's a bad joke, wasn't it? You know, at one time in America, that's exactly what happened. Back in the 1600s, some influential Christians didn't like how commercial Christmas had become, so the colony in Massachusetts banned celebrating the holiday, and that lasted for a little over 20 years. It's hard to imagine a world without Christmas, especially one without our favorite carols. But it's easy to recognize that not everyone celebrates Christmas for the same reason. We should be thankful then that we have Christmas carols to remind us why we celebrate and to help us praise God for keeping his promise to send a Savior to his people, the same Savior whom we celebrate today. We're going to share with you some stories uh, that are behind some of the world's most loved Christmas carols, and we'll be singing those carols. And the first one we're going to start off with is Angels We Have Heard on High. And, you know, we've talked about this here at this church, so we'll know the answer of, of what was one of the hardest, smelliest, and most dangerous jobs back in Jesus' day was being a shepherd. Yep, the shepherds worked long hours. They slept outside. They chased away dangerous animals and thieves and had to find water for themselves and their animals. They had to nurse those sheep back to health when they were sick. And if you've ever messed with a sick sheep, it's not really a lot of fun just telling you that. We're not going to go why I know that. But even though their job was hard, shepherds didn't always get a lot of thanks. But you know what? We, we, we serve a God that loves everybody and cares about everybody, shepherds included. And so that's part of why we read in Luke that he sent his angels to the shepherds to announce the birth of Christ. Now these particular shepherds were guarding the sheep at night when an angel appeared and told them about Jesus. And then, and always like when it says, suddenly... You know, more angels appeared and they sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. The Savior God had promised, the, the Savior that God had promised was coming and that meant good news for even the smelliest of shepherds. In angels, we sing the story of the shepherds, we sing the song of the angels, glory to God in the highest. Now, although we don't know who wrote this carol, we do know that the song was originally French. Uh, it was written in the 18th century. It was translated into English uh, about 1862. It speaks of hearing the angel's song echoing in the mountains and then questions the shepherds about why they are so happy. It answers 
And it begs those who, to come to Bethlehem to see the King Jesus about whom the angels were singing. The carol invites us to imagine Jesus lying in a manger, the Lord of heaven and earth on whom even his earthly parents ought to worship. God could have sent Jesus' birth announcement to kings and queens all over the world, but instead he sent it to shepherds. So singing this carol encourages us to praise the God who keeps his promises and who cares about everybody, whether they are shepherds or kings or you or me. And so as you are able, if you would stand, we are going to raise our voices together in angels we have heard on high. The words should be on the on the screen and if you're a tactile person it's on page 238 in the in the hymnal Please be seated. <laughs> Our next song is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. For an, for an occasion as important as the birth of Jesus, one song just isn't enough. Charles Wesley, who wrote almost 9,000 hymns, wrote his own song about Jesus' birth. His original version started with Hark How the Welkin Rings. But thankfully for us, his friend George Whitfield changed it to what we sing today. The song starts by calling us to listen to the angels singing about Jesus' birth. Hark basically means listen up. And herald angels are messengers from God who have a really important message, as if anything they say isn't important. 
While Angels We Have Heard on High tells the story of the shepherds, Wesley's hymn starts there, but goes on to say who Jesus is and to marvel at the mystery of God being born as a tiny little baby. So who is that newborn that the angels sang about? Wesley explains that he is the king who will bring peace between God and sinners, and that even though he is adored by even the most important and impressive beings in heaven, he was pleased to become a man veiled in flesh on earth. Wesley Im imagines Jesus as a frail little baby and yet calls us to hail him because he is the Prince of Peace who brings light, life, and healing to all. Singing this hymn not only celebrates Jesus' birth, but also reminds us of the larger picture of what he did with his life, death, resurrection, and ascension. You may re remain seated as we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Our next hymn is Joy to the World. Some of our favorite Christmas carols aren't actually carols at all. They're hymns. One of the hymns is Joy to the World, written by Isaac Watts as a paraphrase of Psalm 98 about the Messiah's coming and kingdom. But why do we sing a hymn based on an old psalm at Christmas? Because that's what the psalm says to do. Psalm 98 is all about singing a new song to God who promised to judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Ultimately, God fulfilled that promise by sending a king unlike any other king who would save people from their sin and sadness. That king is King Jesus. So when we celebrate Christmas, we're celebrating when God kept his promise with the birth of Christ Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And what does joy to the world tell us to sing? We sing about their being in the moment of Jesus' birth 
and announcing that the king that God promised is coming. We sing that we should prepare our hearts for him and that because Jesus is king, the whole creation should sing. This new king brings joy and he will remove sin and sorrow and then he will let his blessings flow like a river far as the curse is found. That means that wherever there's sin, Christ our king will fix it and he will rule over his creation with truth and grace and all the nations will sing about his righteousness and love. Although this is a great hymn to sing year round, it is also a great one to sing at Christmas because it reminds us of the joy that Christians should have as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. If you would stand with me while we sing. Joy to the world. <laughs> be seated and if the children would come up and meet Mr. Corey right up here at the front. He has dog treats for you. I saw them. Good morning, everyone. How are y'all? I brought some treats this morning. Do you, what kind of treats are those, though? <laughs> You're right, there are dark treats. These probably, they're probably not the best ones for us to eat, though, huh? They, they, I, they, Miss Alice says they're good. But <laughs> I, I, I've never personally tried one. Well, maybe when I was little, but, but not recently. But, you know, there's some, there's some pretty nasty flavors. But, you know, who, who, who loves these? That's right. Dogs love these. And, and with these treats, you can almost get a dog to do anything for you. You can tr teach them how to sit, roll over, beg. I mean, they will do almost anything for a treat. Sometimes even when our dogs come in the house, like the only way to get them to go out is to kind of shake that bag. And I mean, they're going to come running. But if you don't have that, they, they're not going to do what you want them to do. You know, our relationship with God is sometimes like that. Like, we, we do good things, we pray, and we, we expect God to bless us. But, you know, sometimes that's not how it works, you know. Um, God, he, he wants us to praise him when things are good, but he also wants us to praise him when, he was bad, when things are bad. And it kind of reminds me of a person in the Bible. Um, there was a guy named Job, 
And Job, he was blessed with a big family, wealthy, a lot of things. And one day, the old devil, he went to, to God and said, you know what? Let me, let me, let me test him. And I, I'll take everything that you have blessed him with. And you know what? That guy's going to turn his back on me. And, and you know, God sat there a minute. And he said, okay, you know what? You, you, you go test Job. Let's see. Sure enough, the devil took everything that God had blessed Job with away. And, but you know what Job did? He, uh, he said, you know, I came into this world with nothing. I'll leave with this, nut, with this world with nothing. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But you know what? I'm going to praise God no matter what. And, that, and that's what God wants us to do. No matter what's going on, he wants us to praise him when things are good. And he wants us to praise him when he's bad. And uh, usually when we do that, it always comes back around. God's always going to take care of us. It may not be when we want God to take care of us. And it may not be how we feel like God needs to take care of us. But he's got a plan. And Job trusted that. And God blessed him. And that's what God expects us to do. Praise him on the highs. Praise him in the lows. And uh, that's all I got. So, uh, oh. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you do give us, Lord. Lord, and there is times when we pray. And sometimes we don't always get the answers that we want. But, Lord, let us lean on you. Let us trust you that no matter what's going on in our lives, and let these sweet kids remember this morning thing, that you will never forsake them. And that you will always be there for them, no matter what's going on. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Our next song that we're going to talk about is God Rest You Married Gentlemen. <clears throat> now, you have to understand that <clears throat> my mom and my Aunt Lucy were English teacher type people, so just know that. And so when I found this, I, went, I thought of them. If you never thought a comma could be confusing, then think again. Shouldn't the comma in this song title come after you or ye, whichever one you're looking at, instead of Mary? That'd be true, except that sometimes words can change meanings over time. For example, cool used to mean sort of cold, but now it can, you know, it can mean awesome and maybe can mean unfriendly. Similarly, the word rest used to mean keep and Mary is another way to say joyful. So the title of this carol really means something like, gentlemen, may God keep you all joyful. That probably doesn't rhyme as well, I'm guessing. Although nobody is sure who wrote this song, the way it was written makes it sound older than it probably is. Since it was printed in 1833, people have changed a few words here and there to make the song sound better until we have what we sing today. God rest you merry gentlemen reminds us that nothing should steal our joy because we know that God sent his son to be born as a child who would save us from Satan's power. It then recounts the story of angels appearing to the shepherds announcing Christ's birth, telling them to search for the Savior who's going to vanquish all the friends of Satan. That means all the sin and the bad guys. And with news like that, the shepherds rejoiced. They left their sheep. They went to Bethlehem. When they arrived, they saw Jesus in the manger with his mom kneeling at his side, and they began to worship him. The carol ends by calling us to sing praises to the Lord and to embrace each other with true love and brotherhood, remembering that the true meaning of Christmas outshines all worries and brings us lasting comfort and joy. Now, we're going to be singing only the first three verses, but one thing I found checking into this, this thing has like seven or eight. No wonder they sing it when they're walking around town. You know, it <laughs> takes a while. But anyway, you know, just stay there sitting because, you know, just sit there and we're going to sing this baby is to the top of our lungs. <laughs>
our next song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. When Philip Brook, a rising young preacher and staunch abolitionist, was asked to give the funeral address for President Abraham Lincoln, he must have been daunted by the task. And sure, his eloquent eulogy would be the most famous lines he would ever pen. He was wrong. Shortly afterward, exhausted from years of war and longing for rest, he took a sabbatical from preaching to visit the Holy Land, hoping to find peace. There, as he visited still insignificant Bethlehem and looked out at the landscape at night, the lines for a poem jumped to his mind. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, a silent star goes by. <laughs> I'll be all right. Hold on. This one makes me cry. Sorry. <clears throat> Several years later, he, became, he came back to the poem and completed it. His organist, Louis Redner, added the music. It was first performed by the children's choir in his church, and very quickly the verse was included in hymnals as a seasonal favorite. But one child <laughs> who wasn't born yet would find special meaning in Brooke's song, Helen Keller. Where are you? Okay. <laughs> The famous educator who became blind and deaf met Brooks years later. He was the one who explained the gospel to her for the first time. Through her teacher and translator, Ann Sullivan, she told Brooks, I've always known there was a God, but until now, I've never known his name. Okay. Mm -mm. okay. The carol's <laughs> third verse, though written years before Brooks had met Keller, captures perfectly the joy of salvation arriving to a deaf and blind child whose ears could not hear his coming, but whose heart had long recognized his presence. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. So remain seated. You're all right. And we're going to sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs>
tag in. <laughs> you know I couldn't. I would cry too. So the next one is Go Tell It on the Mountain. And history can't tell us who first sang the lines of Go Tell It on the Mountain because the original author and lyricist was an enslaved African American. The call and response praise songs that came from this terrible stage of our history are known as spirituals, spread orally from one plantation and farm to another. We do not know much more about the people responsible for bringing this song to the... Oh, we do. Hold, hold on. Wait a We do know. Actually, I, I just have a little side note. I read a book from our church library. It's a historical fiction about this very choir that I'm about to speak about. And I will tell you the name of it when I go look it up. <laughs> but it's in there, and it's a really great book, so trust me. We do know much more about the people responsible for bringing this song to the rest of the world. In 1907, John Wesley Work Jr. compiled and edited a number of songs, including this one in his songbook, Jubilee Songs and Folk Songs of the American Negro. But the song was popularized decades before that by the original Fisk Jubilee Singers. That's what the book is about. The Jubilee Singers started out in 1871 as a brave little band of young people led by George White and Ella Shepard. Many of them were former slaves, and their mission was to raise money for their struggling university on a singing tour through the cities of the North. They began by performing only traditional hymns and classical arrangements to show their musical training, and their performances received a moderate amount of attention, but the journey was anything but easy. When their money ran out, they had to scrimp to get coats to protect themselves from the cold northern winter. They kept going. When they were met with threats and hostility and were turned away from hotel after a hotel in Ohio because of the color of the skin, they kept going. When reviews derided their music and editorial, editorial cartoons depicted them as minstrel singers, they still kept going. At last, three days before Christmas, the tide turned. The choir had run out of funds when the most famous preacher of the day, Henry Ward Beecher, invited them to his church. They began to sing the songs of their hearts, the spirituals they had learned from their parents during slavery days. And the wealthy congregation responded with tears and donations. Soon, they went from struggling to successful to eventually famous, world famous, when their following tour of England had them appearing before nobility and even Queen Victoria herself. Their concerts were the first time most Americans were introduced to spirituals, including Go Tell It on the Mountain, a seasonal crowd favorite, so that the good news could truly spread over the hills and everywhere. Okay, if you'd please join with me by standing and singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
please be seated. <clears throat> you know, the most recorded carol of all time had humble origins. It was written in a tiny village in Austria by Franz Gruber and Joseph Moore, churchmen who wanted a simple song to perform for Christmas because uh, the, the uh, organ was kind of out of commission. So it was performed with accompaniment by the guitar and was later performed by groups of traveling folk singers spreading it around the world. But perhaps the most famous place the carol has been sung was also the most unusual because it was sung in the trenches of World War I. In December of 1914, hostilities had died down between the battles as tense English, French, and German soldiers waited for the next bout of gunfire. But on Christmas Eve, what they got instead was an unexpected ceasefire. In certain places along the line, enemy soldiers ventured into no man's land to play games, exchange gifts, smoke cigarettes, and celebrate together as best they could, knowing that in a few days they would resume fighting against each other again. Many men who were there recounted the beauty of the familiar Christmas carols that were sung among the soldiers. The Englishmen were, were you know, famous for God rest you married gentlemen. The French were their, with their boisterous Cantique de Noël that we now know as O Holy Night. And the Germans with Stille Nacht, Silent Night. Hmm. I can do this. Schlaft in himmlische Ruhe, sleep in heavenly peace. So if you would stand as you're able... Here we go. This was wonderful, a cozy carol Christmas, and we even have carol here. 
And we do want to thank Carol and Karen and Alice for the Jow Gals <laughs> for, uh, for all they did. That was really good. Thank you all. <laughs> if, we, if we need crying or laughing, you guys are all for it. That's good. Well, uh, let me make sure to mention, uh, for, the, for those of you who are, who are able to, please pray for Joan Tucker. Um, she's struggling right now, and I ask that you will pray for her as, as you can. Also, remember that uh, this, this New Year's Eve at 930, I'll be praying, and I'd love for you to join me from your home. Uh, but with that, let me just say this word of blessing. Father God, we are here to celebrate and to give ourselves and our worship and, our, and just, Father, our love to you. Because, God, you, you are the one who sent your Son. You are the one who gave us the greatest blessing, the greatest joy that has made our lives so amazing because of one single act. God, you have loved us so much. You have given so much light in our world. I ask, God, that you will help us to be a light to others. Help us, Father, to truly spread this good news. The carols we sing, Father, don't let them just stay in this room. But, Father, let them fill our hearts so that we might go forth into all the world and let them know the amazing news that Jesus Christ is born. And Jesus Christ is here. Go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.